2008. Call to order. I'm Chair Bill Rosendahl, and joining me is Council Member Greg Smith. We have a quorum, and we can start our meeting. Uh, we've been suggested, Mr. Smith, <laughs> that on consent, Roz is back. Yeah. I thought you were on vacation. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> Wow. And she's in a bad mood, so. Oh, oh that's right. She was yeah. next door, wasn't she? <laughs> we're being recorded. Yeah, we're, we are on the air. Um, I, I have been suggested that, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, that we should consent item one, three, and four. Uh, <coughs> um, is there anybody who wants to talk about one, three, or four? I don't see any cards here. Excuse me, Mr. Edwards. What item are you speaking on? Oh, here? Thank you. you. You have a card for? I'm sorry, for number three. For number three? If you've got a card, please submit it to the clerk now. That's the clerk. That's me. And well, then we'll just start with um, um, consent on item one and four, if that works for you. Yes, so moved, uh, we've um, moved out of committee items one and four. <coughs> uh, we have a card on item three. Could we ask the clerk to tell us what item three is first? Item number three, city engineer report relative to the vacation of Via Las Vegas Vacation District. Vacation number E1401012. And I have a card here from Antonio uh, Merez. Permits, you don't say you're for or against or in general comment. What are you on that? Okay, come on. Come on up and uh, tell us uh, what your general comments are on this particular issue. Good afternoon. Welcome Good afternoon. to Public Works. Thank you. Uh, my name is Antonio Bermudez. I work for uh, McCormick Baron Salazar. We are partners uh, on the development, redevelopment of the Aliso Village housing uh, project there on First and Mission. <clears throat> uh, the housing authority of the city of Los Angeles continues to own uh, the land uh, adjacent to the proposed tree vacation, uh, and the partnership owns the actual housing units that are on the land. So um, my general comment is we're currently working with the uh, LA Unified School District um, <clears throat> they're currently the ones that are proposing the street vacation. So uh, uh, we're still working out some details in terms of uh, issuing a letter of support for the street vacation. Uh, we just haven't gotten to that point yet where we're ready to issue that letter. Uh, so I just wanted to make a comment that uh, we're, we're continuing to work with the school district, um, but as of yet, we still have not uh, issued our letter of support. Okay, sit there for a second. Would you react to that? Um, well, uh, it doesn't sound like you're against it. You're on oh, for it. Record, you're oh, my name is Serge Adam with the Bureau of Engineering. If you're for it, we're having it on consent right now. If there's no objection, there's also gentlemen in the audience that can answer your question in more detail from LAUSD and the Bureau of Engineering. So, is there? Yeah, I mean, I obviously I don't want to hold up the process in terms of opposing the street vacation. We just want to ensure that uh, we still have time to be able to work with the LA Unified and, and Bureau of Engineering. Uh, Could I we get to the letter? Come on up for a quick second. Uh, state your name uh, for the record, and, and let's have a little quick verbal conversation here. Good afternoon, Don Lancaster, LAUSD. Edmund Yu, Public Works Engineering. And your concerns? Any questions for them? Uh, I, I think uh, we've been working with Donald, and, and uh, we've been working all in, in pretty good faith. And I, and I just want to make sure again that those it, it just continues. Um, I, I guess one, maybe one item, I don't know if the staff report can be revised at this time, if not, but um, one of the conditions is obviously that the adjacent landowner uh, gives our consent to the vacation. And again, because the housing authority continues to own the land, but the actual improvements are owned by a different entity, which is the, the development entity. Uh, don't know if both the landowner as well as the partnership, uh, you know, the staff report can be modified to reflect that there's two you know, owners, if you will, that are adjacent that, you know, should should give their consent to the vacation before it moves forward. Comments back? Uh, normally, right now is um, is the property owner, normally what we will be looking for is an arrangement between you and LAUSD, and if you think that there are multiple ownerships, for us, we will just look for all those consent, and I don't think really we need to change any condition. The condition by itself would be able to deal with if there are multiple ownerships that would leave that will need to give the consent administratively, we can handle that. That's fine with me. And again, Don Lancaster, LAUSD. Yes. We've been working with McCormick, Baron Salazar, over the past year. 
to find a way to make sure that they are included in this project. Um, they've been wonderful. We're working through a process to ensure that they have dedicated time to use our, our soccer field. We've been responsive to the council, council office as well to uh, develop a full service soccer field when originally that wasn't in our plans. Um, so we're working in good faith with the developer and we'll ensure that they have an interest in, um, in a joint use interest in our soccer field. Council office? Excuse me? Which council? 14, 14. Councilman Weezar. Jose Weezar. Does that work? Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Give a motion to move it. So moved. So moved. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very Give much. Your dialogue. And if there's any issues, let us know before it goes to council. When is it scheduled? Uh, I haven't scheduled it yet. Um, right now, it probably won't be until October 1st or 2nd. Okay. Make sure you let everybody know on that, and, and hopefully, there's no issues by that. Prior to that point. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have two more to do. Uh, one is, uh, is that uh, item number two special? Could we? Item number two is continued from December 11, 2007. City engineer report relative to the vacation of the alley northeasterly of Cesar E. Chavez Avenue between State Street and the Golden State Freeway. Vacation number E1400900. Serge Dad from the Bureau of Engineering. We have staff from Council District 14 here to uh, make a comment on the record to modify the conditions in the vacation. Hi, my name is Paul Habib with Council Member Jose Weizar's office. Um, Council Member Weizar would like to support this vacation um, uh, along the following lines uh, as long as it's amended. Uh, CD14 would like to amend City Engineer Report dated September 25th, 2007, condition number 5A to read, construct a full width concrete sidewalk and repair slash replace any broken off, broken slash off grade slash curb and gutter. Um, CD14 also would like to delete condition number 5 uh, C. And uh, the Bureau of Engineering consents to that. Smith, so move. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we're up to number five. Good things are five. That's my lucky number. So we'll see. Item number five is continued from June 18, 2008, and July 30th, 2008. Joint Chief Legislative Analyst slash City Administrative Officer report relative to proposed fee subsidy policy for special events and related matters. Additionally, we are in receipt of an additional joint report that arrived after the agenda was released. It, it came in yesterday. What was that last point you made? Um, essentially, we are in receipt of an additional report. It did not make the agenda because it came in after the agenda was released. And where did this report come from? Uh, it's a joint CLA-CAO report. Do we have copies of Mrs. Smith and I at this point? Is it two page, uh, three pages? Three pager? Actually, it's quite it's extensive. Uh, we did release an electronic copy roughly an hour before this meeting, so it made a little task of feet. The body of the report is three, three pages. Yeah, that's three pages. It's, it's dated uh, September 16th. Three pages. Yes. But the right. attachment. Right, the attachments are lengthy. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a three pager. And the chart that you have in front of you yeah. is also part of that. Yeah. Well, bring us up to date. Um, at your meeting, I'm Lynn Ozawa with the Chief Legislative Analyst Office and Ray Serrana, the City Administrative Officer, is city, seated to my left. At your meeting of July 30th, your committee considered an earlier report that both of our offices had submitted. And at that time, uh, your committee asked for another follow-up report uh, to address the issue of whether or not um, rev uh, tax revenue generated by special events was sufficient to offset any costs the city had, as well as uh, you asked for additional information on specific uh, categories of special events by council district. So the report that we have now submitted to you um, addresses those issues. Unfortunately, with regard to being able to verify whether or not uh, special events generate uh, sufficient revenue to offset the uh, estimated costs that we have come up with, uh, we, we aren't able to verify that. We checked with the Office of Finance, 
and they said that unfortunately they don't collect that information in that form and they don't, uh, with regard to farmers markets, they can't verify that everyone who is selling at a farmers market has a BTRC because they don't have the staff to go out there to every farmers market to verify that. Um, because quite frankly, um, if someone doesn't have gross revenue of over $100,000 and they don't pay any tax, business tax anyway, so they need to strategically deploy the limited resources they have. If I could hold you up before we ask any questions, Mr. Smith and I, I'd like to let the two public comment cards go up so we can get that on the record. Uh, and you can just stay right there. We'll just have that one seat for that. I'll ask John Edwards to come on up, and, and then I would like to ask Walt, uh, if it's Walston, to come up. And we'll hear their comments, and then we'll continue with Mr. Smith and myself. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is John Edwards, and um, since 2005, I've been a voluntary uh, director and president of Raw Inspiration, uh, which uh, operates farmers' markets, including in your district. Where are they in my uh, district? Brentwood and, um, and uh, Pacific Palisades. Okay. And in fact, uh, when I, I've been trying to get hold of a copy, uh, I think uh, Councilman Alacon had a slightly different view of what this uh, updated report should be. I was under the impression he wanted to know about the the benefits to the community that farmers markets and special events had. Um, in your own district, Swarthmore, that was the street that was closed on Sundays and until a farmers market came there, um, there was no activity. Every single shop is open there now and that's a tremendous economic demand and that in my opinion should be in this. Um, obviously you can tell from my accent, I'm from England. In London we've had a report on farmers markets to show quite clearly the economic benefit to the entire economy. They have it in New York. I don't see why we, we don't have it here. Just recently, um, LA Live came to us, and they said, you know, it's so dead on a Sunday at LA, would you open a farmer's market? Now, what is it that LA Live management, a very sophisticated business, sees in the economic benefits to have a farmer's market there on a Sunday that the CLA's office doesn't see? I mean, it, unfortunately, it's not just about the business sales tax. That's a very, if I may say, small amount of money. But the amount of people they attract farmers market really makes a significant impact on the neighboring areas. Uh, Rick Caruso, I know it's not in the city of- He's in my district in, in, in Brentwood. I beg your pardon? He's in my district. Uh, absolutely, but you know, he's just opened the Americana on brand. They've just asked us, would we open there, uh, one there on a Sunday? Because his business is, it gets more people. They're, so what does Rick Caruso know that the CLA doesn't know? I mean, there are tremendous economic benefits of farmers, I can't speak to other special events, yeah, but on... No offense uh, to what you just No, said, of course not. There's a, the CLA uh, uh, are great people. Oh, oh there's no question, yeah. It wasn't yeah. their issue that they were dealing with, and right. they were saying they were having trouble getting that kind of data. No, I, I do understand, and, and I, I'm, you know, I'm sort of not criticizing them, but uh, what I'm saying is there's a much broader view with farmers' markets than just the, the tax. And, um, and if we're honest, I mean, it seems that they're... There is a view since 2003, I've been involved in this subject when this first came up with uh, Councilman Weiss, I think it was in 2003. Um, the fact is it seems there's a group of people that think that farmers markets make an awful lot of money and people are really rich. Um, I think it may be a case for Santa Monica market makes money. I think there may be a case that the Hollywood, the large one there makes money, but neighborhood farmers markets do not. Um, I appreciate it. And you spoke more than two minutes. Oh, I do apologize. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no problem. Everything is fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to show my bias, but I'm a candid guy about it. I know Swarthmore. Right. I know what it does to the community. I'm a big fan of it. And right. I know the community is. They turn out in large numbers yeah. on Sunday. They mix, they mingle, they buy in all the other shops. Correct. And, yeah. and it is a, a wonderful addition to the center of the town. So I appreciate it. Okay. That. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, and the second person is Walt uh, Walston. Good afternoon. Um, Walt Walston, W2 Promotions, and if you excuse me, I'm going to read this. Uh, it's being presented in front of you now. Uh, but it's the last time I got rung off, so I thought I'd better write my thoughts down. Uh, we're requesting the council not to charge or increase special event fees. Um, W2 Promotion is an event production company supporting <laughs> 10 to 12 charities within the Los Angeles area through the production of fundraising walks and runs. My concern are that the city fees are not waived or partially waived, many charities will suffer financially.
Currently, with most of my events, the fee amount waived for police, DOT, and street services is between $3,000 and $5,000 just for the police, DOT, and special events, uh, special services. One event we did this past spring charged over $5,000, which caused charities connected to, to not get that revenue at all. This economy, in this economy, many charities that hold special events depend on fee waivers to show a profit on their events. Runs and walks for nonprofit charities draw new people uh, to the various communities they're held in. Restaurants, hotels, businesses uh, uh, do a um, tremendous amount of benefit, as do the charities through the exposure of the charitable cause and financial gain from the special events. I urge the council to consider not to charge fees for special events for nonprofit charities and also to not limit the number of events held in their districts, but to work with the charities to spread them evenly throughout the year to lessen the impact on residents and the community. Thank you. Thank you Questions? Appreciate your comments. Thank you. Mr. Smith. <clears throat> well, a couple of things. Um, one, one thing I'm not clear about yet is we used to have $100,000 in the, one of the proposals that was hanging around here for at least a couple of years. Uh, we each council district would get hundred thousand dollars and then we charge against that and has that gone away now? No, uh, there was that amount budgeted mm -hmm. uh, for 2008-09. Okay, but if you're saying we set this process up now, we no longer have that dollar amount for each office? Each office still has a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, and, and as I look over this chart you gave us, are you projecting, and please excuse me because I wasn't going to be here originally so I haven't had a chance to read the report so please walk it through me a few things. There's a few things here <clears throat> such as award shows where obviously one district is award shows basically. $400,000 and only two other, three other districts have anything at all to speak of. <clears throat> are you uh, saying that all these categories are under the fee waiver policy? Are there some that are going to be taken out because they're obviously a citywide function that happens to reside in like the 13th district where you got all the premieres or downtown where you have the convention center and all the things around it? Uh, yes, one of the part of the proposal is that citywide events would be taken out of the mix. They would be paid separately. Okay. So what categories were those then on this chart? Well, they're not necessarily by these categories. It, the city attorney is still working on a citywide event definition. So it could be some award shows. It may not be all award shows. Um, it could be some community cleanup events and not others. Um, it could be um, some national night out might be a citywide event, possibly. Um, it, it just depends. Yeah. And there's some categories, like First Amendment, we can't no, control and, that. So No, and uh, those thought, are absolutely yeah. going to be uh, funded. No, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, I, I know Mr. Rosendahl has very big concerns, as do I, about um, uh, block parties. And, and he has a significant number in his district. I don't have anywhere near it, but I've always felt that it's probably the very basis of what we should be writing in free waivers. Uh, so I'm not sure we should even count them. Um, my, my issue has always been, and as you will recall, I've debated quite often, the issue of farmers markets and how they do impact. I have no doubt that they bring financial benefit to the community. Um, the question is, and I've asked and you've answered, and that is we don't know because we won't go out and check. Our, our city department won't go out and determine if business licenses were issued or not. <clears throat> As I've looked at farmers market around the city, there are some that are really local community events and some are professionally run organizations that come in just to make a buck. There are others that hide behind the guise of being there for charity purposes. Uh, they basically rent a charity and say, oh, we make a contribution to them and for which we then go and make money. And, and that's been my biggest concern, how we draw a line. It, and I would suggest uh, that we, and we'll bring this to the floor if necessary, but I would suggest, Mr. Rosenthal, that maybe the way to do that is to say to those farmer markets who claim to be giving money or supporting charities that we waive fees equal to the amount of money donation. If they donate $5,000 worth to local charities, then we should give them $5,000 credit. 
Um, if they're not really giving a lot of money to a local yeah, charity, and they have to prove to us they're doing that. I totally agree that we need to pull out the farmer's market and, and, and ask these questions. What I have as a recommendation, which I would um, like your support on, is that a recommendation to the CLA to report uh, to separate the special event category for farmer's markets from the proposed policy and instruct the CAO and the CLA to further analyze this issue with those questions you're adding and report back with an alternative strategy to address the special category of events. And in that, to find out what kind of money they make, what kind of an operation they have. I personally am going to grab my eight farmers market and sit in a room and ask all those questions so I get all that information. And that we should pull this out of this moment so we can move the report forward so we can get a better analysis of it. And whatever questions you want to add to that part of the process of getting the CAO and the CLA, I welcome that so that we can get a full picture of that and then bring it back to the committee and have a better understanding of what they're doing. Okay. Well, we, on the remainder of the report then, those other categories, um, what if we pull farmers markets out of the equation for the moment, <clears throat> just for the moment, That's right. <clears throat> what, and, and again, you, you had an issue of, of the street fairs. Yep. <clears throat> I still think that's a fair block parties. I think that's a fair question. What would the savings be in the general fund as far as this plan now? For <clears throat> if you were to take out block parties? Take no. Oh, I'm take sorry. out, well, for now, farmers markets. Um, 602,000. 602,000 is, is what this plan would save to the city's budget. Oh, I'm sorry. 300,000. Right, because it's 50%. Yeah. So we're only saving $300,000 if we don't talk about farmers markets. That's Correct. So that's not a, I mean, we're giving away over $5 million a year, and the best we can come up with is $300,000 in savings? It's 300,000 of the 2.5 million that we believe can be saved. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just to make it clear. The, the farmer's right. market piece is 600000 so it would be the 300 off of the 2.5, so we'd still be saving well over $2 million. That's okay. That's what sorry. I was asking. Oh. All right. That's a significantly different number, and that's a significant number as we look at the city's budget and the concerns <clears throat> that some of us had about our, our policy. Um, that, to me, is a legitimate proposal yeah. to go forward, and then we can come back and discuss this one last component. Yeah. Let me suggest something else here talking about a one-stop permit office. I'd like to have you talk about that a little bit, what that means, and then I'd like to ask a question on it. Um, I'd like to ask Roz Carter to speak about that. She's the most familiar with it. Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilmember Smith, uh, the one-stop special events permit office would be administered by the Bureau of Street Services. In essence, when a request would come in for um, the approval of an event that is nonprofit. Um, the B-roll would take that application and then we would set up an electronic type application process where it would go to the various departments that are necessary to facilitate that particular event. It would go around <clears throat> to each department and once they have indicated what their fees and costs would be, it would come back to the B-roll street services where the calculations would be done in terms of what that cost would be for that particular event, and that's where the 50% would come in. And on that, my question is, what is the level of coordination and communication between the one-stop permit office and the council office? Because obviously the concern is that the, we need to ensure that adequate public outreach has been done to our local residents' businesses in the city. Basically, the existing policy requires that event sponsors notify the community. This is why there's a 51% petition requirement today. And so that would be the coordination to the community. And the policy itself, one of the recommendations is that um, notification would be given to the community regarding any events held. And Mr. Smith, I'm going to and um, make if my I may, if I just sort of, if I may just add on it. Also, as part of the, the process and what's being recommended is actually that a brochure be established that sort of provides some information to neighborhood councils and other groups. I think we're talking about perhaps a manual that sort of describes the process and so forth. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we're also like to get something on the web, you know, website that actually okay. the people can go to and, and yeah. grab that information. So, taking that, I have three um, comments and recommendations with with your approval. 
I move that the committee recommends approval of the recommendations contained in the joint CAO CLA report dated September 16, 2008, with the following amendments. One, add a recommendation to the CLA report that instructs departments uh, to not charge permit fees for block parties. Second, add a recommendation to the CLA report that instructs the Bureau of Street Services and or Department of Transportation to allow the coordinators of block parties to pick up and return traffic control devices from the closest convenient location to the block party site and to only charge the refundable deposit for these devices. And three, add a recommendation to the CLA report to separate the special event categories for farmers markets from the policy proposal and instruct the CAO and the CLA to further analyze this issue and report back with an alternative strategy to address these special categories of event with the questions that you will submit and that you will work with my office to submit so we get a handle on this issue. Yeah, I'm totally supportive of that. If I could add one more, sure. uh, and that is to ask the Board of Public Works to review, I guess it would be all, no, all relevant departments, because there's DOT, et cetera, to review their policies on what uh, services that they provide on fee waiver to see if, they, if we even need to do it. I know too often that we, we, pay, we charge our citizens for things other cities don't, and I wonder why sometimes. Um, it seems like it's just we've done it for so long, it's just the bureaucratic way we do it, and that's that. So I, I would think that we could look at other cities, an example, and see if there are other ways we could cut the cost of fee waivers by just cutting some of the stuff we do that seems sometimes silly in my mind. Uh, Mr. Chair, the CAO and my office would like your permission to um, <coughs> develop or to submit to the clerk revised recommendations that are more specific so that it's easier for the next committees to follow, mm -hmm. if that's okay? Yeah, sounds okay. good to me. Um, and um, as was just suggested to me that in item one, add a recommendation, as we just said, to CLA report that instructs departments do not charge <coughs> permit fees and salary costs block parties. Get that word in there so we can see that. Okay. okay. Um, now, Mr. Smith. And then there, there was one other thing that, um, the, parades which are kind of like block parties are kind of like endemic to a community and we should have like one a year waiver uh, except on those citywide such as the Christmas lane parade which is a citywide function but a community parade <coughs> should have a one-time just waiver as well because they only ask usually once a year and there's not that many in the city some communities have a lot more and that becomes problematic but <coughs> um, you know one a year would seem uh, reasonable request and, and they do eat up some resources but that is really in, like a block party it's really okay. neighborhood oriented okay. now I'm wondering uh, with your august uh, history here the procedure is we report this out of committee mm -hmm. as we've said yeah. um, and then it will go to budget committee it's also going to personnel too and personnel um, and anything else no, no, no. What I'm wondering is if it makes sense, we send it to personnel first. Yes. That's normally the protocol. Yes. Uh, and, and then after that process, bring it to budget. Yes. And then my hope would be somewhere within that period, um, recommendation three, do we have to go before the full council for that to go forward, which is to bring the farmers start markets it. together and get a better understanding of no. it? No. And we start um, that. Yeah. Good. So that's clear that we will go on right. into that process as we do that. Adam? Uh, just one technical point, uh, the um, September 16th report refers to a May 15, 2008 joint CLACO report. Uh, it's, is this the same as May 16th? Was that simply a, just for clarity there? Thank you. Is that it? Motion to move. Second. Out of committee. Move. Praise the Lord on this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's out of committee again. Committee <laughs> again. For another Out of one committee. Two around. Oh. Two more to go. Let's hope not. Well, she earned her eggs, by the way. On this one. Uh, is there any other issues, any other public comment, anything else anybody wants to talk about? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Meeting over. Thank you all.